I was there, I was involved in the program, I saw what we did is, uh, counts as torture. For more than 20 years, Glenn Carl had an inside view of how the United States went about playing the great game of international politics. In the decades since September 11th, he's watched the rules of that game change dramatically. I was a career operations officer in the clandestine services of the CIA. They're always troubling things, and the job is to go to the edge of what is acceptable and maybe troubling, but still acceptable, legally, morally, and so on. I was involved in the early days of the CIA's interrogation programs or, or responsibilities. Immediately after 9-11, the CIA set out to cripple Al-Qaeda by kidnapping those who may have had a link to the terrorist group's leadership. This clandestine kidnapping was called rendition, and Glenn Carl was about to be asked by the leadership of the CIA to find out exactly what one of these rendered prisoners knew. So we rendered uh, a man whom the CIA had been following for years, uh, figuratively and literally. Uh, and uh, considered one of the top, very top uh, members of Al-Qaeda. Not, not a fellow traveler jihadist or a small guy, one of the central players. Um, they said, we've rendered him. Uh, this is what the briefing to me was. Uh, several days ago, the interrogation is not going well. We need you involved. And he said, like this, standing arm's length from me. He said, you will do whatever it takes to get this man to talk. Do you understand? I could not believe that a CIA officer would be talking about what I considered torturing someone to obtain information. So I said, well, we don't do that. And his response was, well, we do now. So I said, well, what about the Geneva Convention? At that point, he became disdainful. And he said, well, which flag do you serve? Carl was given no specific directive, only that whatever damage was done to a prisoner could not be too severe or lasting. In the Korean War, American prisoners had been tortured using Soviet methods, and while there was no real evidence that these methods were useful for anything other than extracting false confessions, Carl says that advisors in the CIA nonetheless turned to those methods as a guide. Non-lethal physical abuse was combined with something more potent, constant assault on the senses. Barrages of light, extreme temperatures, painful escalations of sound, and prisoners prevented from sleeping. It doesn't take long to drive a person to the edge of madness. You can lose your sense of self within 36 hours, hours. It's really fast and it's really uh, awful. And the theory is that by doing that, that you make someone more malleable. And that's all cockamamie. It was based on the assertions of uh, two um, supposed experts who had never done interrogation, never done intelligence work. The psychological uh, work that they did claim to have degrees in had nothing to do with any, any work relevant to interrogation or interpreting information or manipulating a human being. They, they, they're, they're hacks. There has been much media speculation that the man that Carl was interrogating was Pacha Wazir, an Emirati citizen who it was believed ran key financial operations for Al-Qaeda. For his whole career, he had mastered one tool for convincing foreign men and women to betray their countries. Conversation. Words. I sat, as you and I are sitting, about the same distance away, which is probably seven feet, and uh, for f up to 15 hours or more a day, I looked him in the eye and I talked. And I, I told the fellow, I said, uh, I said look, if, uh, if I were you, 
I wouldn't trust a word that I say, and I know you don't. You shouldn't. That is a sane response to being sitting across from a CIA officer who's kidnapped you. You know that I can do anything I want to you. You've disappeared from the face of the earth. There's a circle in which I have responsibility and can, can maneuver, and you're in that. And I can do anything I want to you now. Outside of that circle, I lose control. And outside of that circle, there are people who are far more powerful and much, much nastier than I am. And if they are not happy with me, the circle gets smaller and smaller, and then I will be taken away. And then you're fucked. He believed what I said. Carl began to suspect that this detainee was in fact innocent, that the CIA had made a mistake, and that he did not have the answers that Carl, as his interrogator, was trying to get from him. There were questions he could not answer. So I would write my, my telegrams and I said, my assessment as the officer leading the interrogation is that he cannot answer this question. And the response from headquarters was, the fact that he is not answering proves that he is withholding information. And I thought, I really did think, I'm dealing with an imbecile, because that's stupid. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I only learned two years later, after there was a leak, that the formal procedures, the orders, standing orders for the Director of Operations in the conduction of interrogations were, the absence of an answer is proof of guilt requiring harsher measures. It's crazy, but that's a fact. This directive meant a detainee would eventually be forced to either invent answers just to avoid being further tortured or risk being held indefinitely, even if they did not know the answers to the questions being asked. Pacha Wazir, the man who best fits the details of Carl's story, was freed in 2010 after being held for almost 10 years. I heard that he had been um, uh, released with a supposedly muted apology from the U.S. government uh, and told, you know, go and lead your life, but don't say anything. Everything I argued at 10 years before when I was involved in it was substantiated, which was that he wasn't a member of al-Qaeda, he hadn't sworn bayat to bin Laden, he was not a jihadist, he had been cooperative. Um, but my recommendation to, to let him go uh, was not accepted, and it took 10 years. Having tortured terror suspects on the premise that al-Qaeda posed an existential threat, the Bush administration was committed to proving the severity of that threat. A narrative was pushed by Washington of an oversimplified clash of civilizations, and Muslim groups everywhere were reduced to one simple plastic enemy. The Bush administration actually conflated Hezbollah, which is a Shia organization, with Al-Qaeda. And Saddam, who is a sec was a secular Muslim, if that, such a thing exists, a secular Arab, uh, with Al-Qaeda. I mean, it's, it's, it makes no sense intellectually or substantively or factually. They were all viewed as the same problem. The statement was that al-Qaeda was present in 80 countries. That was testified by George Tenet. He had been told that by the CIA. That's, that's wrong. That's wrong. Al-Qaeda was present in six countries. And so, the man who'd been sworn to secrecy by the U.S. government and who vowed to do all to protect it has turned, doing what CIA agents are never meant to do, pulling back the curtain. Like many Americans, Carl now harbors a cynicism about his government's real motives after 9-11, and he feels betrayed. Unbelievably, but literally, um, a, a six to a dozen people uh, sufficed to usurp all of the laws and the checks and balances of the executive branch, no, more than that, of the United States government. Torture pales compared to the fact that my government was no longer what all of us believed it to be. 
And yet worse than that still, worse than that still are the consequences of what happened, and they are the effects on the American culture and, our, and American citizens. When you poll Americans who are over 35, should uh, the CIA be allowed to torture to protect us? That's the gist of the question. A strong majority of uh, Americans 35 and above say, well, absolutely not. The CIA exists to stop this sort of thing. That's not American, no. Americans 35 and below, you ask them the same question, and a majority of them answer, guys like Carl, CIA officers, they have to do what they have to do. It's okay. And the fact that our political culture has shifted in a way that, that um, honorable, decent um, people now can coolly discuss whether American officials should torture is, I think, worse, the worst thing of all, because we have become something other than ourselves. Carl told Pacha Wazir that the only sane response is to not trust the interrogator. It is hard to believe a man who spent a lifetime dealing in secrets and lies and then turned on the CIA itself. What is interesting is that no one has refuted his tale publicly, and indeed it lines up accurately with what is known about Pacha Wazir's experience. Behind closed doors, Carl says the reaction from former colleagues to his whistleblowing has ranged from supportive to savaging. A couple uh, said to me, Glenn, you know, you shouldn't do this. You're aiding and abetting the enemy. And why do you want to uh, air our dirty laundry? <clears throat> and I disagree with them on that. Someone has to tell uh, the truth to the American public, people, uh, about what we have done. Uh, I think more people, uh, more colleagues feel that way than the, the former way. Now what's happened though is the, um, frankly, the friends of uh, Vice President Cheney, neocons, have been quite active behind the scenes. You know, if you don't like the message, you kill the messenger, of course. Um, and it's not direct accusations. It's much more subtle. So they, they have um, approached many of the producers on different programs and uh, for the major programs and they say the following things. And I've heard this from a number of different sources. They say, hey, Bill, hey, Mary, how you doing? And you got to understand that, you know, Glenn's an unemployed malcontent, a guy on the make. You know, he's a drunken wife. He can't even handle his home life. Um, sort of fell apart, this guy, I think, really. Not very trustworthy. Bye. And uh, that's had a real effect. Is any of that true? None of it is true. None of it's true. Every word in the book is true. There are only two sources who could even verify the accuracy of Carl's claims. The CIA, which Carl fought for over a year in court to publish his book, in the end, the CIA's Publications Review Board redacted, blacked out, almost half of what Call wrote. The second is, of course, Pacha Wazir. But Pacha Wazir is, understandably, done talking. <laughs>